Let's get into the papers now, see what the headlines are saying across Nigeria. And I have with me in the studio uh, uh, gentlemen to do justice to this. I have uh, Shinson Kwade. He is uh, uh, certainly a, a, a chartered accountant, a public affairs analyst, and I also have Ambrose Siboki, a journalist and an analyst as well. Gentlemen, good to see you. Good morning, you. Everybody. All right. Good morning, Mike. All right, let's uh, begin with the Daily Sun. That's where we start from this morning. As President signs 8.8 .8 trillion naira appropriation bill into law, Buhari says National Assembly padded the 2019 budget with 578 billion naira. We can't be rubber stamp, says uh, Dogara, a Speaker of the House of Reps. Okay, that is uh, what's on the front page of the Daily Sun this morning. From there, let's move to the nation. The Nation newspaper this morning. He says Buhari rejects bid to stop EFCC from seizing assets. And President seeks input from ICPC, NFIU, others on the bill. Okay, from the Nation, let's go to the Guardian. The Guardian is the next one now. Why we disagree with you? National Assembly tells a President. A leader signs 8.92 trillion naira 2019 budget. False changes. And analysts unveil highs, lows of fiscal spending plan. Okay, that's uh, what The Guardian has on the front page this morning. Let's see what the Tribune is saying. The Nigerian Tribune says, 2019 budget will be hard to implement, says uh, Buhari, as he signs it into law. The executive legislature friction over budget will continue. Dogara is uh, revealing that. Okay, uh, from the Tribune, let's go now finally to the Vanguard. Uh, in, it talks about insecurity. Salah celebrations cancelled in Daura. And uh, it has some multiple writers there saying Islamic clerics differ on cancellation of uh, celebration. And banditry kidnapping now like Boko Haram. Northern governors are saying that and, uh, Buhari governors adopt a strategy to fight ins insecurity. We can't promise Boko Haram will be eradicated. Presidency is saying that. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, the president passed the budget of uh, over 8 trillion naira yesterday and he sets the ball rolling for the new fiscal year. I'm going to start with you, uh, Chesson, on this. But he said that with some of the adjustments the National Assembly had made, that it would be difficult or challenging to implement. Talk to us. Uh, you, you see, I find it difficult to understand the manner at which we prepare a budget in this country. Mm. It should be a situation where people work together to synergize for the masses to actually get value for what they're actually doing. The executive arm is saying it's going to be difficult to implement the budget. The NAS are telling us that they are not going to be rubber stamped, this thing. I, I think there is a budgetary process where every arm is expected to make their input in the preparation of this budget. And come to think about it, it took us over seven months for us to, this, this is mid-year, and we are just coming with a, a budget that should have been approved right from January for us to start having implementation. And we go about and say, we're fighting corruption. You see, how have do, we do been... You see, do you see it as majorly, uh, uh, or basically the issue of corruption for for not uh, passing the budget until now. The fact remains that self-centeredness is around all this and not for the masses. All right. Ambrose, uh, I wonder what you make of uh, the 2018 budget that has been running until yesterday that the president signed it. Uh, the federal government, uh, or in fact, the DG of Budget Office, was uh, uh, Al-Kabweza was saying that uh, uh, the implementation is 75% of 2018 budget. Uh, what do you say? Well, if we are still doing 75% uh, when 2018 budget, when we are in the mid-year of 2019, although they say it will roll to uh, June, um, just as Sheshon said, uh, we have been doing this for a while. And then this blame game that the president always brings around, and you know, 78 billion that I said they added, that the National Assembly added, is less than 1% of the entire budget. Of eight trillion naira. Yeah, but so but how does it, that? It wasn't just the addition. He yes. said that there were some programs they had lined out. Monies were reduced from those ones, and others were increased where there wasn't priority. And then some new projects was were also infused well, or who, injected. Who defines into who defines what is priority? 
Because the National Assembly, the legislators will say this is a priority area. The, the executive will say this is a priority area. It's a function of bad liaisons between the two. There used to be liaison. There needs to be somebody who actually bridges the gap. These things, we are not supposed to hear them. Of course, them. They, they have, they have, to, they they have a liaison. They, they, that's what I say. It's mm. a bad liaison. They don't have a good liaison. They are, the person is not doing his work well. Or somebody is not listening to their quality advice being given by the liaison. Because they are not supposed to be having this uh, fiscal every year. And it comes, this uh, Buhari's regime, it has, been, it has been constant. And that has uh, having issues. Now, the function, why the, they are having that again, is because there is no economic blueprint for this government. I keep on saying it. There's no economic blueprint. So when you are planning a budget, when you have an economic blueprint, when you are planning a budget, you key into that economic blueprint and build your budget around it. But there is none. So the executive will come with whatever they want. The legislatures will do whatever they want because there's no principle, uh, there's no guideline to what you want to achieve. So if there was an economic blueprint that, that stated in the next four years, this is what we are going to achieve. Then. You cannot key into that. So I beg the presidency but, to but, come up with but, an economic but the plan. Government, the government will certainly differ with you when they say that uh, we have three strong agenda in the last dispensation we wanted to uh, uh, fight against or work on, which were the issue of uh, corruption, the issue of security, and the issue of economy. When we talk of economic... So, so, so when, it, when it comes to all of those... Uh, the government will tell you they, no, they those have, are they those have are taken. Mm. It's just like a governor who is paying salary and counting it as an as, as achievement. Yeah. Those are taken. We had, look at doing your bus and just, we had needs. National Economic Economic Empowerment in the integrated strategy, where people, key, then states even devolved it and started having seats. That is a serious uh, economic plan. So when you have the economic plan, you people can key into it. But when you don't have any, you just say body language, you do anything, then that's... All right, so so when it comes to it. the breakdown of what sectoral breakdown or allocation of funds, uh, that will be made uh, available in the presentation today at about 10, 10 a.m. But the point there is, uh, what hopes do you have that issues like education, issues like transport, housing, power, and health, what, what hopes do you have that they will get the appropriate or the desired uh, allocations? For me, I don't have any hope. The fact remains that uh, we hardly monitor whatever we put in place. And it's pretty difficult. If now the, the, the DG of budgetary uh, uh, the, uh, ministry is telling us they could only achieve 75% of the budget, he speaks volume. And you discover that all the areas where they intend to work, take for example security, was priority of this administration when they came in. Even last year, so much money was inve invented into it. But are, are, are we seriously secured? Day by day, we become, in fact, the topics we listen to every day is about insecurity. Education is nowhere. That's why you see majority of our guys keep traveling every day to go and have education outside here. For me, whatever the sectoral area, they, like uh, he said, there is no footprint for us to monitor, not just only economy. Who monitors what and what we do? No one. Or we just do it, somebody do it the way he wants, and he care less whether we benefit from it or not. For me, whatever the sectoral aspect of it, I have no confidence because nobody monitors every step or activities that is being actioned, either by the executive or All the right. legislative. Arm. The president has said that uh, those who refer to him as Baba Goslo will be shocked in this next dispensation. So we wait to see how that plays out. Ambrose, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I know you have a lot to say, but well, let's leave I, you here right uh, now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Well, it's time to look at uh, stories making the headlines in Nigerian newspapers. I have in the studio two gentlemen, public affairs analysts, Ambrose Iboke and Cheson Okwade. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on TVC Breakfast. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. All right, let's head straight to the papers, and we will start with uh, the Daily Sun. Major headline here says, as President signs 8.8 .8 trillion Naira appropriation bill into law, Buhari now spotted 2019 budget with uh, 578 uh, billion Naira. We can't be rubber stamp, says Dogara. We'll move to the nation now. The major headline here says, Buhari rejects bid to stop uh, EFCC from seizing assets. President six impute from ICPC, NFIU, others on bill. The Guardian, 
Why we disagree with you, National Assembly tells the president. Leader signs the 8.92 trillion Naira 2019 budget false changes. Analysts unveil highs, lows of fiscal spending. To the Nigerian Tribune, 2019 budget will be had to implement, says Buhari, as he signs it into law. Executive legislature friction over budget will continue to Gara. And finally, on the front page of the Vanguard, uh, uh, insecurity, Salah celebrations uh, cancelled in Daura. Islamic clerics differ on cancellation of celebration. Banditry kidnapping now like Boko Haram Northern governors. Buhari governors adopt strategy to fight insecurity. We can't promise Boko Haram will be eradicated presidency. And that is the story we will be looking at, gentlemen. Uh, cel celebration cancelled in Dara. That's the home state of uh, the president. I'll start with you, uh, Shesson. What do you make of this? How would this uh, tackle the, the essence of this cancellation is because of the issues of uh, kidnapping and insecurity in the state? Yeah, can cancelling the celebration, I'm sure, must have come from the security tapes. You cannot celebrate amidst insecurity. We've uh, seen the level of bandit and uh, killing in the, in the last few months, it's really alarming. And what is there to celebrate when you are not secured? How you, you, you cannot go around, save. The best thing to do is just stay in door and just be there. And these are part of the things we've been talking about this government. When they came in, they are, one of their cardinal points well, is to work on security. Insecurity, insecurity, yes. And we get more insecure day by day. And look at it. They are not just doing it externally. Now to the, to the town of the number one citizen of this country that has led to us counseling celebration where people are supposed to just move freely after having this long uh, 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 fasting. So it's really alarming that most of the, uh, of the chiefs, security chiefs that we have, like we have been shouting day by day, have actually lost value. They don't, I don't think they have sense of direction uh, of they where they're going. Because we cannot be growing this day by day. When you wake up, what you read on the papers every day is insecurity here. Yeah, it has trickled not only from the uh, Maiduguri area, Let even to, 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 to the western area here. Yeah. No, we are safe. Uh, Ambrose, is this as a result of uh, the security chips not having a sense of direction on what to do to tackle uh, issues of insecurity that this decision has been taken uh, by the people? Well, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, everybody has his own responsibility in this uh, entity called Nigeria. And when the commander in chief appoints uh, security chiefs to uh, tackle the insecurity problem and provide security for the country. The onus therefore falls on the security chiefs to do that. Um, they have failed woefully in that regard. And why the presidency retains them is what I don't understand. Because um, if it is a working government, they are supposed to have been fired a long time ago. So um, this insecurity is increasing. Uh, they have given it different names from terrorism to um, headsmen. Uh, invasions of farmlands, now to banditry. And kidnapping. And kidnapping. So they're just giving different names. Uh, last, we have regaled every day with uh, the VIPs, very important personalities now, uh, can no longer go to their villages. It was not this bad. Mm. Now it's getting worse. Even uh, the president's hometown is not spared. A few blocks away from the president's uh, own home, uh, the traditional ruler was uh, being kidnapped. And now they're canceling Salah celebration. I don't think uh, uh, a religious celebration has been canceled before because of it. Like we have canceled Loki, maybe we had Independence Day Loki and some other things. We are canceling a Salah celebration in the north because of insecurity. Not anywhere else in the hometown of the president sends an alarming signal about our insecurity. And something must be done about it urgently. Uh, the defense minister, the chief of army staff, the all the you know, uh, security chiefs have failed us in this regard. And I think they should, we should hold them to task. Because it's not my duty to provide security for myself. We have, given, we have entrusted them with that responsibility. Right. And they are not doing it well. 
So uh, uh, the president, or the president, he met with uh, northern governors uh, yesterday, and uh, there are talks that uh, they can promise that Boko Haram will be eradicated. Sheson. How long will that be? Eradicated, this is where we are. Now we are hearing less of Boko Haram, and more, more of banditry, banditry and, and kidnapping. kidnapping. It's just changing the nomenclature as far as I'm concerned. Everything borders around insecurity. Whether you call it Boko Haram, if today you are eradicating Boko Haram and you're facing bad nutri and kidnapping, what have you solved? It's still centered around, you are just using semantics. You're just trying to use different names to colorize whatever you're doing. The fact remains that people are not secure. That they want to end Boko Haram, you, you should just provide security. I'm not concerned about the name you give to it, whether it's Boko Haram, whether it's uh, uh, banditry, whether it's kidnapping. The fact remains that make people safe under your territory. All right, quickly, what would be a proactive step to addressing this? Uh, because uh, the, uh, the president will be sworn in for a second term tomorrow. The proactive step, first of all, is to fire the security chiefs, invigorate new blood so that we can have new ideas on what to do. Secondly, empower community policing so that people can be more empowered and then the vigilante services should be well structured and formalized mm. so that the security can actually supervise them. And I keep saying they should take, uh, you know, understudy the Anambra vigilante service model to see how the crime can be fought in all the different states where local vigilantes, actually they are using it against the fight in Boko Haram. So they should cascade it down to community policing right. and these people can be fished out and then they can solve it at that community level. Yeah. All right, Shasun Kwande, I'm Bruce Thank you for your time thank on TVC Breakfast.